Good morning, everyone, and welcome to County Executive Pittman's virtual press conference. This morning, the County Executive will provide legislative updates. Uh, we'll take questions after those updates as usual. Uh, as a reminder, please put your name and media affiliation in the chat, and I'll call on folks for questions in that order. And please keep your microphone and camera off unless you're called upon to ask a question. With that, Mr. County Executive. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning. Uh, mo most of what we discuss in these weekly briefings is actions that Anne Arundel County departments take to better the lives of Anne Arundel County residents. But before we get into that work, I want to put it into a broader context. The hearts and minds of Anne Arundel County residents are with the people of Ukraine right now. We watch in horror as Vladimir Putin's forces surround Ukrainian cities and bomb residential buildings from the sky, killing children, parents, and grandparents by the thousands. We watch in awe as the Ukrainian people block Russian tanks and shoot down Russian planes. We're inspired by the words of resistance from President Zelensky, and we celebrate President Biden's success at coordinating a global, global economic squeeze on Putin and his oligarchs. When Putin notes his nuclear readiness, we shudder. We contemplate the need to defend our own country against a man who has spent years paying cyber warriors to drive wedges between our people and their own governments. We all have a personal relationship with government defined in part by our close encounters, paying taxes, applying for permits, getting a speeding ticket. And it's okay to complain about all that, and we do. But when our institutions are truly under attack, we quickly remember that in a democracy, our government is us. We fight for the institutions that we created to protect and serve us. We will all be asked to sacrifice in this battle against Vladimir Putin's ambitions. We will pay more for gas and for food. If this war escalates, the costs to everyday Americans could grow. What we can do today is to appreciate what we have engage with one another in a civil manner to make it better. And remember that all across this globe and this county, we have far more that unites us than divides us. So today I wanna to offer updates on work that is underway in our two legislative bodies, our County Council and our Maryland General Assembly that does engage and impacts our residents. So first the County Council met last night, uh, late, um, went to midnight and uh, had to postpone the rest of their agenda until the next meeting, um, discussing primarily our, our bill to implement the, the State Police Accountability Act. Um, we have a bill before the County Council to create the Police Accountability Board that that act mandates. And I want to say that before that meeting, uh, we engaged, I engaged with six stakeholder groups, had multiple meetings with some of them. We put out a video for the public to educate folks on what is in the state law and what authority Anne Arundel County has within that law to create a police accountability board. And I just wanna thank everybody who testified, everybody who's weighed in on the process so far. Um, and, and, uh, and I wanna thank the council for their hard work on this. Um, they got through most of the amendments. I believe there are a total of 49 amendments to this bill. Um, I want to thank them for voting seven to zero on an amendment that we put forward on our own bill um, that requires public testimony at each of the, of the police accountability board meetings. Um, there has been a lot of interest in this, and we want to make sure that all of it is open to the public and going forward that that board gets input from all parts of, of our, our community, all of our stakeholders. So thank you everybody for that. Um, the green infrastructure plan legislation that is before the council did get amended last night. Um, we were hoping that that would pass and, and we believe that it will at the next meeting. Um, when it does, we have two other major announcements having to do with um, our work um, on the environment in Anne Arundel County. And we look forward to uh, getting all of you together for those announcements when the green infrastructure plan does pass. Um, in the Maryland General Assembly, I will be testifying tomorrow on two important bills to Anne Arundel County. And the first one came to me from 
a group of residents that are organized as the BWI Roundtable. Um, so those are residents who live near the airport in the flight paths of BWI Airport. And it's, no, uh, it's not news that since 2015, when the next gen system was put into effect, that uh, airport noise has been worse. Planes are flying lower than they were um, in their approaches to the airport. And, um, and the impacts of that are sleep disruption, uh, difficulty enjoying any kind of outdoor activity, um, lower academic performance in children, health implications such as anxiety and high blood pressure. What this bill does, um, and it's been introduced by Senator Lamb, uh, Senator Elfrith, Senator Riley, Senator Gazone, and Senator Hester um, from counties surrounding the airport, uh, Howard and Anne Arundel, is that it creates a commission to study the health and environmental impacts of future development in particular um, at the airport, um, just as we do for other kinds of development and growth in our county and our state. So this commission would have representation from the counties most affected by the flight pass. It would have support from a school of public health, uh, and it would have the advice and involvement of state officials, citizen advisory groups, experts, and industry representatives. Um, so this commission will be positioned to ensure that we have the data we need to make informed decisions to protect the health of our communities and minimize preventable health-related outcomes from the airport and its flight paths. So I look forward to testifying on that bill. Thank you to uh, the community who, who really put it together and brought it to us. And then Senate Budget and Taxation Committee, I will be at for Senate Bill 0726, which is the Highway User Revenue Bill. And this is a bill that I've been working together with my peers across the state, with the Maryland Association of Counties as well. It will fully restore the local share of highway user revenues and provide desperately needed funding to repair and maintain the local roads and bridges that we all rely on for our school buses, our first responders, our workers, our tourists, and everyone else who uh, contributes to the Maryland economy. After the cuts that were made during the Great Recession, Anne Arundel County's highway user revenues, our share of the highway user revenues, went from $32 million in 2007 to less than $6 million in 2018. So uh, with the temporary phase in passed in 2018, our highway user revenue is still less than $9 million. And without SB 726, even that amount will again drop in fiscal 2025. So cumulatively, we estimate that we have lost out on $370 million in highway user revenues since the cuts made during the Great Recession. And of course, our county's traffic has not decreased, but has increased since that time. What we've done in Anne Arundel County is um, we've addressed some of the planning and the, and the sprawl development issues in our plan 2040. Um, we have done development in a way that makes traffic worse. Um, we also have Move Anne Arundel, our multimodal transportation plan that also has the potential to get cars off the road. But there is no way around um, putting the investments that we need into everything from filling our potholes to adding additional lanes to reduce traffic impacts um, on our county roads. We, um, in the first year of my administration, created the Permanent Public Improvements Fund um, that created $250 million of infrastructure projects, schools, public safety, and roads. But still, we need that state support. Just this year, we budgeted $43 million for road and bridge projects um, in Anne Arundel County. So um, this is, is uh, something that we believe we have a good chance of getting done this year in the General Assembly, um, thanks to the surplus that the state has. Um, it's finally time for the state to share those highway revenues with the counties, uh, particularly Anne Arundel. So I will stop with that, take questions on this or any other topic. So back to you, Jeff. All right, as a reminder, please share your name and media affiliation in the chat. If you've got a question, I'll be calling for, on folks in that order. Amy Simpson, Fox 45. Hey, good morning. Uh, County Executive, you had touched on it uh, briefly earlier. With gas prices going through the roof right now, curious what the impact is on the county's transportation budget right now. 
Well, it's fortunately we have um, budgeted conservatively this year as we have each year. And, and we do have uh, the money to be able to cover that. Um, I don't have numbers exactly on the increased costs, but as you know, we have a fleet um, that is gas powered um, by 2035. It won't be anymore, it'll be all electric, but for now um, it's having an impact. And, uh, but, but we have a fund balance that can cover that. And any comment on the uh, new airline coming to BWI? Uh, we welcome them. Uh, I mean, we we're very proud to have BWI Airport in our county. It's a transportation hub. Um, it's a great economic driver for Anne Arundel County. Um, we just want to make sure that um, airport noise is um, is considered. Um, and uh, um, so we welcome them. Thank you, sir. All right, next up, Dana Monroe, the Capital Gazette. Hi, um, related to the police accountability board bill, I was wondering why um, the county hadn't written the bill with the coalition, the coalition of 19 human rights organizations with their demands in it. And if you might be considering those demands in future amendments. So yeah, there are six proposals that, that have um, a coalition of organizations has come together to support and we certainly have considered them. We've met multiple times with both members of that group and, and that group as a, as a group, as a coalition. Um, the problem with some of those, and, and some of them will re readily acknowledge that the state bill was written with an effort to have uniformity across the state in counties um, in the way that complaints um, are, are considered, um, complaints against police officers of misconduct and the, the primary focus of those requests is that from the coalition is that the police accountability board have the authority to do its own independent investigations. And in fact, it's the, it's the charging committees under state law that have the authority that, that, that make decisions based on investigations from the police department and then have the authority to contract out for additional investigative services. So um, we believe that if we did that, it would immediately be challenged. Um, in the courts and that it would not proceed. Thank you. All right, Rob Lang, WBAL Radio. And um, good morning. Uh, with respect to the transportation money, what's the biggest need? I mean, assuming you get, the county will get its fair share, what's the biggest need right now? What's the biggest project that's, uh, or the top priority project that the county wants to have funded? Well, I mean, we have top priority projects that we've invested our carrot to bring the state into because our worst traffic bottlenecks are on state roads, Route 2, Route 3, um, Central Avenue and others. Uh, but we have ongoing needs that are way beyond our capacity to fund. Um, we're, doing, we're doing pretty well compared to other counties on repairs and repaving, and we're keeping up. We have a system for that. Uh, but it's coming from our general funds because we're not getting it from the state highway user revenue, and then our efforts to create complete streets, to do sidewalks in particular, sidewalks especially where kids are walking to school, um, and bike lanes, and, and uh, the ability for transit to, to be able to move through um, our, our high priorities for us in our transportation plan as well. Um, we, could absorb, we could absorb this money quite easily. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, last call for questions. If you have one, please put your name and media affiliation in the chat. All right, thanks everyone. We'll see you next week.